Hello, and welcome to Marketplace with Charles, brought to you by Art of Skin Care. Art of Skin Care, the company that brings out the beauty in you, as well as Kuwisa Lodge, where dreams do come true, situated in the heart of Mabalingua Nature Reserve. Just imagine yourself sleeping, dreaming, and waking up with a big five at your doorstep. That's what Kuwisa is all about about. On Marketplace, we aim to empower, encourage, and equip you with the right tools that you need to move closer to you achieving your entrepreneurial dreams. Each week, we bring you insight from experts in different fields of business, from men and women of faith. One powerful way of leaving a lasting legacy is being able to invest in projects that will not die about one's death, but are sustainable and allowed to be carried on down to the next generation. Such will be projects that millions that one may never get to meet and know will benefit from. My guest today will engage us on this economic development and African intra-trade story. Remember, we bring you real people like you who do exploits for God and for this country. Today, we meet a visionary, one who is able to set sights on goals that benefits not only himself and his family, but also benefit scores of other people. That's what God created us to be. He is here with all the projects to benefit the nation at large. He possesses admirable understanding of economic issues that are key to driving the sustainability in the vision. Welcome, Mr. Guguletu. Thank you very much, Charles, and uh, greetings to yourself and uh, all the viewers out there. It's always my pleasure to have great men like you on the show. Thank you. I'm honored as well to be here. You know, off the camera, you told me you are not that great. But allow me to say to you, you are greater than great. Because I listen to you on your radio show. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> That's very humbling, especially that you do listen to the radio show. It's a really exciting uh, radio show that we have every Tuesday where we talk matters of economic development, entrepreneurship, and political economy, which we think it's really a very important topics nowadays, especially with young people of our country. If you don't mind, take us through your radio show. My radio show basically is on Ukoz radio station. You know Ukoz is one of the, it was the biggest in the continent by listenership. Yes. Because it's got close to 8 million listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, and the biggest morning breakfast show that I, I get featured on every Tuesday, quarter to eight, where we talk about entrepreneurship, uh, economic development, as well as political economy. We really think that uh, it's about time that our people, especially young people, should be able to be more biased towards economy and entrepreneurship, especially in light of uh, the challenges that are engulfing our country as far as entrepreneurship, uh, as well as joblessness, inequality, yes. and all those types of ills that are plaguing our society. Mm -hmm. Google. I tried practicing very hard to click. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried even to use a big pen. Click, 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 yeah. and I could not. Do you mind to introduce yourself nicely to our viewers? Who Gugu is and the company that you represent today? I suppose you're not representing Ukose FM. Of course. But it will be wise and best for my viewers to also get hold of you on Ukoz FM because that will be the extension of the program that we're having today. Who is Gugu and what business do you represent today? Well, Gugule to Aba uh, is I can't my say that. name. <laughs> <laughs> Born from Guazulu Natal, but living here in Johannesburg now for close to 20 years. Yes. Uh, I am an entrepreneur. Uh, I regard myself as an economic development specialist. I run my own company, which is doing enterprise development, 
uh, business acquisitions and all sorts of uh, business related issues. Uh, I sit as well in the body called African Business Leaders Forum, which was launched by the former president over two years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a body that deals with uh, issues of intra-Africa trade. I'm passionate about Africa as a continent because that's the future of the entire world, basically, in many respects. That is, in short, myself. Like you have said, I run a show on Ukozi FM mm -hmm. where I was privileged once again to be asked by the management of the radio station to come and help push our nation forward on matters that I think are very important so that we have people around the coffee tables uh, during their dinner time, not just discussing politics and sports, but discussing matters of economy and uh, ensuring that they participate meaningfully, especially in the mainstream economy. So during my show, therefore, we talk statistics, we talk practical uh, stuff around how to be effective partakers of the economy uh, in our entire uh, economic ecosystem. So that's basically who I am uh, in short. Let's talk about your business. Yeah. What role do you play in your business? Or what do you do within your business? I am a founder of this company called Adamopix, which is a company that deals in that space, as I've said, enterprise development. Yes. I'm the managing director or the CEO of the company. Uh, I therefore direct uh, the affairs of the company and lead a team of vibrant economists as well as uh, accountants who are helping to really realize the vision of the company uh, through enterprise development, through uh, assisting uh, entrepreneurs put together their effective and bankable business uh, and marketing strategies as well as sourcing finance. Let's talk about the beneficiaries of your vision. Beneficiaries of vision, Charles, is people that are entrepreneurs. Yes. You, you will know that in our country currently, we're sitting with a big challenge. The challenge has to do with unemployment. Yeah. We're currently and it's sitting, very high. It's about 38.2% uh, uh, on expanded definition and 28.3% uh, which is direct unemployment. Yes. That is high by any standard in the world. And the the people that we need nowadays in our country, entrepreneurs, I believe, more than politicians and more than any other uh, type of people in the society. So the beneficiaries of, of uh, our company, therefore, is those people that want to be uh, uh, sort of partakers in the uh, business world and uh, young and old, as long as you've got a vision and you want to put together a strategy of uh, a business and identify a sector that you want to play in, because the sectors are many or subsectors of economy. So mm -hmm. we therefore assist people in that regard. So beneficiaries are people that would uh, necessarily become entrepreneurs or what we would call in our entrepreneurial world budding entrepreneurs, people who are uh, wanting to get into the entrepreneurial space. You see, the, the challenge that I have is that the unemployment rate is very high and is not going down. Um, and I don't foresee it going down in the near future if we don't take our rightful place. Yes. I'm not just a prophet of doom, mm. but it's a fact. Yes. If we don't take our rightful place and start the SMEs, yes. it will never go down. Instead, it will just spiral. I mean, as we are sitting here today, we are talking of um, SABC, which want to, to retrench about a thousand people. We are talking about uh, the Harmony Gold Mine, uh, which wants to, to, to retrench as well. We are talking even our very own government who wants to retrench the ministers yes. within the cabinet, they are retrenching themselves mm. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and cut down. Even the, 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 the workers all over, they are being retrenched. Yes. You know, it's a lot of massive retrenchment. Yes. I think there is a role which the SME can play. Miles Monroe once said, uh, 
the role of the government is not to create jobs, but to in create an environment of which your business can thrive. Mm. What can you say on that statement? Because we want to inspire mm. people mm. to create their own jobs, yes. not to rely on the government mm. to create jobs for them. Just to amplify the stats you've just given mm. um, uh, further and say, one, we in this country have got uh, 9.6 million uh, unemployed people. These are employable people, but who are not employed. Mm. We're sitting with over 14 million people mm -hmm. who live um, on less than 30, on less than what um, uh, actually who go to bed with inadequate food. Yeah. And then you've got 31 people who live on less than 35 rand a day. 31 million people. Million, yes. Yeah. yeah. Who live on less than 35 rands a day. Mm. Right. So mm. that's the stats of our country currently as well as the unemployment uh, figures that we've given earlier. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking SMME, small, medium, and micro enterprises. Yes. They employ collectively in the country, at least according to the DTI's uh, stats, they employ over 65% of the total population, mm. right? So, and then we talk entrepreneurship, which has now to do with uh, people being given an opportunity, as you've rightfully uh, summed up by Miles, in the environment that is enabling, right? So that's, that is what we are talking about. The challenge currently in our country is we have got a lot of what we call survivalist entrepreneurs as opposed to opportunity-based entrepreneurs. Mm. Okay. You've cited the stats around government mm -hmm. and the private sector retrenching massively. Mm -hmm. Recently, as recent as early this week, I was around here in Pretoria. I went into a certain McDonald's where ordinarily you'd have had over 30 people being employed. Yeah. I think right now it's sitting with a little bit over 10, 10 people employed. Mm -hmm. Because when you get in there, you punch in your order, you no longer order from the person on the other side of the till. Mm -hmm. So this is a compendium of issues. It talks to, number one, the type of leadership that we need to have in this country in terms of understanding what needs to be done in the future, not only of South Africa, but of Africa and the entire world. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it talks about the issues of the fourth industrial revolution, which can no longer be ignored. Because even all of these matters that you've summed up nicely around uh, government retrenching people, I think uh, mines, they're going to retrench over 13,000 people next year. Yeah. So, and many other uh, institutions retrenching people. Part of it is because of the fourth industrial revolution, the digital disruption, and the and, and the and the way of the future of the world. So there has to be a real rethinking of the models that we are using in the country mm -hmm. in order to find a way of advancing uh, ourselves as a nation as well as advancing our people. Because to have over 17 close to 18 million people living on basic income grants in this country. It's just a recipe for disaster. Let's talk about the projects that you are engaged in that you will see the economic empowerment of our people. Thank you, Charles. In our company, Adamo Peaks, we yes. try to find ways of interpreting, yeah. firstly, the government policy on the ground. You'll know in this country we've got what we call National Development Plan. Yes, NDP. NDP. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, provinces, we've got what is cascaded down to as being uh, provincial growth strategic plans or frameworks. Yeah. And thirdly, at the district levels, I'm just talking about the structure of governance in the country. Mm -hmm. You've got some sometimes what we call your uh, district development plans, which all derive from the uh, PGDFs as well as NDP, including your local economic development plans. Mm -hmm. We, we know that our country has been talking a lot, but not implementing a lot. So that's a space that we have yeah. decided to zoom into because for every chaotic situation, you know, as an entrepreneur, you see an opportunity yeah. And yeah. to exploit. Mm -hmm. So that's where we come in basically to say we can have a contribution by packaging people who will take a keen interest in, t in certain sectors of economy. Mm -hmm. If it's agri agriculture and agribusiness, we look at it holistically, not just from what you eat on the table 
only, but we look at the entire value chain mm -hmm. so that we can establish that. I'll make an example for you. We currently are doing what is called rabbit farming. In this country, it's big, and we've got uh, contracts uh, overseas for people who want to uh, consume rabbits. So whereas in the past we've slaughtered uh, less than 10,000 rabbits, but this year uh, the rabbits that have been slaughtered are 280,000. Uh, are you taking into consideration what we, we slaughter at home? I'm not even taking that into consideration. That is just... Because we hunt them at home. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that and as now well. now it's business. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, okay. so those are yeah. rabbits. I'm just taking mm. one particular example of uh, your, your, your sector, subsector yeah. of economy in the mm. agri space. So it would help people in that sector, those who have an interest. Mm -hmm. So it goes with people in the clothing and textile environment, just across all sectors, including mining. Yeah. So that, 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 those are the people that would be coming to us to say, we want to farm rabbits. We want to enter into the mining space, whether it's sand or minerals of any sort. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and we want to work and, and position ourselves to take charge of that sector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then how do you identify your clients? Mm -hmm. Do they come to you or do you go to them? How do you identify them and know that these are good? Yes. Mm. We identify our clients through many processes. Yes. One, we go to them, we advertise ourselves widely, we've got a website. And two, our, our company is already on top of mind, as it were, in terms of uh, the people that we target. So yeah. you'd find at times we work with government institutions like CEDA, Small Enterprise Development Agency, uh -huh. which we are accredited with. We are accredited even with IDC as well, mm -hmm. sitting in their panel of experts including uh, your CIFA, as well as uh, your ETALA and all those other institutions in the country that are known to be helping entrepreneurs. Wait a minute. Mm. L let's talk about these in institutions. Mm. You, talk, you spoke about uh, uh, CIDA, ETALA, and IDC. Yes. What is that? It, it, and what is it that they do? Mm. Briefly, I know you, you're not working for them, yeah. but you are working with, with them. them. Yes, of course. Mm. E e e NYDA, for instance, National Youth Development Agency, yeah. got a five-year contract to help the youth mm -hmm. through them because they are focused on youth entrepreneurship. Yeah. Secondly, e e e CEDA, uh, e they, they are helping build business plans and marketing strategies and feasibility studies for people, anybody in South Africa mm -hmm. who wants to be part of the business world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, IDC is one of the DFIs, Developmental Financial Institution, uh, together with the CIFA, together with ITALA, those are organizations that we work with uh, mm -hmm. to be able to source funding from uh, for entrepreneurs that need some help. Gugu, tell me, how does one aspiring to benefit others get involved in this kind of business? Uh, let it be educationally or in any way. Somebody who wants to help other people. Yes. Within my business, yeah. uh, we, we basically open up opportunities for employment yeah. for young people in particular and, and for people that want to work in the company. Yeah. Uh, and our approach when it comes to how we do our business is very unorthodox in that we, 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 we seek to inculcate a culture of being selfless, being mm -hmm. altruistic to our people. Mm -hmm. Those who are working for our company, they know that uh, actually they, I always tell them that uh, you're not gonna end up here. So learn as much as you can from this small company, but two, ensure that you do your best for reference purposes in the future. And I encourage them to get out and become entrepreneurs themselves, those yeah, who have yeah. got that spark. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not an orthodox way of doing business because you are telling people that are your employees to mm -hmm. say, hey, get out of this place and give space for others to uh, come and work, but you mm -hmm. become an entrepreneur because you have learned so much. So I'm very happy that we've done really uh, that over the past almost nine years successfully. A lot of our people who have been working for us are now outside of the, the company, either working for others or others are running their own businesses. The, the greatest challenge mm -hmm for small businesses yes. is access to finance. Yes. Do you have a way of assisting them, connecting them, helping them to get the funds? Because that's the greatest challenge. Yes. Although 
most people you give them money they squander it yeah that is true we we do help them i'll, I'll mention two ways number yeah. one through the institutions I've already mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, which are developmental finance institutions, and even through banks, because we are connected even to banks. Your 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 your, your banks sort of like your big four in the country. Yeah. And number two, you know, what you are talking about, which is finance, is, is not an easy thing. It's yeah. difficult, because it becomes a catch twenty two situation all the time when you are dealing with an entrepreneur with an idea, as well as an entrepreneur who wants finance to move with his idea and he wants the market. You'd mm -hmm. find people in the financial sector always going to say, give us your collateral. People do not have that. Num yeah. yeah. Number yeah. two, give us your bankable business plan. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. But give us your market. That's where we come in as well. We enable markets first. Mm -hmm. So at, at least it, it makes it easy for a person to have access to finance. Mm -hmm. But one thing I want to say as well is we encourage our, our people to, to sometimes form uh, what you call crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh, to pull together so that they can be able to reach their destiny quite quicker uh, 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 in terms of accessing uh, funding because at least once they have got money together, just like in Stockfell environment, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. able to leverage on that uh, and say and they can borrow uh, money from the banks. I, I, I like clubbing up Yes, the, the concept because you, you, you can't make it alone sometimes. Yes. And if we were to club up, we can make it. Big time. You know, mm. um, as long as your partners add value. That's true. Mm. Mm. I'll make one example for you. In Durban, for instance, yeah. we started a company in property. Yes. Where 42 shareholders came together and contributed 1.2 million. Yeah. And then within a space of seven months, mm -hmm. already they were able to make a, a turnover of 870,000 rand through buying, renovating, and selling property. But today that company is becoming big in its own right, was sitting with over 2 million rand in less than eight months in the bank. So it's a nice one. <laughs> but how do you remain on the cutting edge? Because, I mean, we, you spoke of the technology here. We, you gave example of McDonald's, which used to employ a lot of people. Mm. And because of automation nowadays, uh, we see massive retrenchments and we're still going to see a lot of that. Mm. How in your business do you remain on the cutting edge? We are a, a research and development business as well mm -hmm. in terms of uh, how we are orientated uh, uh, regarding in uh, helping our clients. Yeah, We always keep abreast of the new information, mm -hmm. of the changes that are happening in every space because you may know something today but tomorrow by the time you wake up it's already obsolete so we we, we are therefore uh to keep ourselves fresh and on the cutting edge are very inspired to always know what is happening understand the global trends even the national trends and see how do we position ourselves each time according to uh, the new trends google you know the way you you speak is you, you are speaking as if you have never failed in life <laughs> <laughs> but some other people they look at me now they say no you have got seven wimpy restaurants yes. they don't know how many other wimpy restaurants yes i closed down yes you look at my success now but you behind my success yes. there has been a lot of failures mm. what would you say to a person who is down and out now who has failed Will you inspire him just for a second to rise up? Yes. Charles, you've said something very important. Um, at times, just like you, you made an example of yourself, you are appearing on TV, mm -hmm. I speak on radio, and people think, wow, what a massive guy with all the money and every opportunity and all the things that you can ever wish for. Little do they know that behind me being on this screen, there are scars mm -hmm. and there are huge challenges that one has to face up daily. I want to encourage someone viewing to say, for you to be a success, don't give up. Mm -hmm. First of all, just understand clearly your purpose. Follow it through. You know, understand that the sector, for instance, as we are talking business here, that you are getting into 
uh, who rules that particular environment yeah. and how much share of market do you want mm -hmm. in it. That's what we call opportunity-based entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Because now we are supposed to really make sure that uh, you understand the environment in which you operate. Because even as you keep on trying and sometimes failing, mm -hmm. but for as long as you've got a clear objective and a goal that you've set for yourself that you want to attain, the sky is the limit. You will always wake up tomorrow with that fresh spirit, knowing that you need to keep moving because you will ultimately achieve your objectives. And if people want to get hold of Google, how do they do that? If someone says, I am inspired, I need his help, how do they get hold of you other than listening to your show on Ukozi FM? I'll give them two uh, ways of conducting us through two websites. Yes. It's www.adamopix.co.za and www.amandaomnoto.co.za. I'm sure we'll be able to write those down uh, clearly so that people will know. Uh, th those are ways of conducting us and our telephone number in the office is 011 941 Zero nine. They can e again send an, e an email info at adamopix.co.za. Well, viewers out there, that's all the time we had for. I hope you have been inspired. You have been blessed. You are going to get hold of Google to help you develop your own business and be your own boss. But being your own boss doesn't make you doesn't mean you wake up at your own time. You wake up. You work and you work very hard. Work smart, but work very hard. This is Charles Ngobini signing off on Marketplace with Charles. You can also get hold of me on charlesngobini.com or on Instagram, Charles underscore Ngobini. Or you may want to go on Facebook and like me. Well, see you next time, same place, and God bless you.